How's it going everybody? For today's beer review, we're going to be taking a look at Clown Shoes Brewery, Undead Party Crasher, and American Imperial Stout. So believe it or not, this is actually my first time ever trying anything from Clown Shoes Brewery. Um, I know they're a pretty big name brewery and their stuff is not, um, it's not hard to come by. And I've, I've seen plenty of their stuff. I don't know what it is, it's just kind of like... I don't know. I look at their stuff and, and a lot of it doesn't seem that appealing to me. I don't know if I kind of just, for some reason, a mental block, I kind of blacklisted them in my head, but I've always just been like, oh, clown shoes, and just kind of pass it up. I don't know why. I do think, though, it's because it's been kind of boring stuff, like Pilsners and Pale Ales and stuff like that, and like regular IPAs. But then I saw that they had an Imperial Stout. I'm a sucker for anything that is an Imperial Stout. Um, it says Undead uh, party Crasher. I don't know if Undead, if that's kind of like a, a Halloween seasonal. I think it said it's a year-round serving, but the name certainly implies that would be a Halloween um, seasonal beer. It comes in, let's see if I can find the ABV here. It comes in at 10% alcohol by volume, which makes this effectively a monstrous, massive beer. If you drink this entire bottle, you're probably going to be tipsy. Um, you'll definitely be feeling it. Once again, as I say and stress to people, 40% alcohol by volume is what most basic whiskey is, like your Jack Daniels, your Crown Royal, your Jim Beam. Imagine that. Take this bottle and fill it up a fourth of the way with straight whiskey, and that's essentially what you're drinking. So you don't realize, and the carbonation also delivers that alcohol much more effectively and quickly than a liquor is going to. So this stuff really can sneak up on you very quickly. So just kind of pace yourself if you're drinking a beer that high, especially one this large. Um, the description on the bottle says, In a world full of uncertainty, hardship, and people trying to hold us back, do we need the undead and trademark attorneys too? Clown Shoes says no, die monsters die. Forces of Darkness brought about a change in the name of this beer, which was released to celebrate our second anniversary, but it still sports signature dark malts, holy water, and malt smoked locally with hickory and ash. That's interesting. I, I wonder if they actually brew this with, like, blessed holy water. That's weird if they do. Um, the whole hickory and ash smoked malt sounds delicious. I'm hoping that means there's some smokiness to this. Um, not really much else to say about it. The label artwork is just insane. There's, like, these zombies in a party. And there's some guy with, like, a gun or, like, a crossbow, and he's just... I don't know. It's just a crazy label. I think their label art is what, at the very least, attracts your attention and your eyes to them because they have just this over-the-top label artwork on all their stuff. So anyway, I'm going to be drinking this out of the Duvel glass. It's my favorite glass for drinking dark beers and stouts and assessing them and all that. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to get the cap off of here. I'm going to take this one off carefully because I don't have a clown shoes cap yet to put on the, the beer fridge okay now this is straight out of the fridge so it's probably in the low to mid 40s and it probably needs to warm up some but I always like to try them cold because some stouts taste good cold anyway straight out of the bottle it is almost jet black wow this looks great I'm going to pour this down the center and see if I can generate a decent amount of head on this Look at that. Definitely enough left there for a second glass. Poured a ridiculously dark brown burnt caramel head. I love when they form heads this dark. Um, into the light, it's pitch black. I can't see any light coming through this at all. Um, as far as just presentation goes, that looks, that's a 10 on the presentation. Pitch black with one of the darkest heads I've ever seen on a beer. That's fantastic. So, let's give it a smell. huge amount of chocolate malt. There is actually a little bit of kind of woody, hickorish, or peat smokiness, almost like a, um, a good scotch ale would have. It's got some um, your, of your dark, cooked, alcoholic fruits like raisins. That smokiness mixes with that malt really well. Maybe dates and just a very slight touch of kind of like a milky vanilla in the very back. 
So you're getting full-on, deep, rich, kind of dark German chocolate malt. Kind of woody, hickorish, peach smokiness. And there's a little bit of like a milky vanilla smell to it with your darker fruits like dates and raisins. Um, it smells absolutely delicious. Um, once again, I would give it like maybe a high 9, maybe even a 10 on the smell also. Uh, so all that's left now is to give it a taste. So let's do that. Very good. Wow. Wow. There's a huge amount of those bittering chocolate and coffee malts, and it lingers. The coffee fades into, it starts off kind of like strong black coffee, but it fades with that vanilla to sweeter coffee, almost like a caramel macchiato sort of thing in the back. There is definitely a little bit of smokiness. It's light, um, but it's definitely enough to where I think they can claim that they smoked it, like they said, with their hickory and ash smoked malt. I can taste that. Um, and it's very good. Very chocolatey. There is a pretty decent amount of alcohol in this, um, but... The one thing that I'm picking out that I'm noticing is that there's just a very slight amount and very slight amount of a metallic taste in the background. And um, as I've said before with stouts, um, you usually need to let them warm up a little bit um, and it usually almost always takes care of any kind of metallic taste that um, is present. And with a beer of this caliber, you should really let it warm up a little bit. So as it stands right now, pretty much ice cold out of the fridge. It's like a 9.5 out of 10. It's probably going to be an A-plus 10-star beer, but um, we're going to let it warm up just a little bit, and we'll come right back. Okay, we have been letting it sit for about 10, maybe 15 minutes or so now. Um, I would say now it's um, medium chilled, not like ice cold anymore. It's probably just medium chilled. Not like super lightly chilled, but just medium chilled. And we're going to give it another smell and taste now. Wow. You know, letting stouts and Belgians beers warm up a little bit, that's not a picky thing. You'd be absolutely surprised at how the entire beer changes, usually for the better and the way it's meant to be, the way the brewers want you to have it. Um, how much it changes when you just let it warm up a little bit, just, you know, patience. Wait 10, 15 minutes. You can sip on it a little bit, but just wait. Um, especially if it's a large bomber of beer, like how this one came in, it's definitely worth it because now this smells like a German chocolate milk stout with, or milk stout, <laughs> a German chocolate milk shake with um, tinges of alcohol in the smell, which some people may not like. Uh, it's really warming and delicious smelling to me. Almost some like brown sugar is coming through now. Yeah, but mostly, it, you know, honestly, in, in, in the smell of this, it reminds me if you've ever had or smelled um, Tin Fitty by Oscar Blues Brewing Company. That's what it reminds me of heavily as far as the smell goes. So let's give it a taste now and not only see if that metallic taste at the end of the flavor development has kind of, you know, gone away, but let's just see if it's changed any also. It went away. It always will. I mean, I say always. 90% of the time, if it's just, just a bad beer, you're not going to get rid of that metallic taste. But this is not a bad beer. you got like sweet, sweet Belgian dark chocolate malt. Almost like malted milkshake or ice cream up front. And that fades into... Pretty bitter um, malt, more like bittersweet chocolate, and heavily on the coffee. Very heavy coffee note coming from this. It smells like coffee. Um, I would say this is definitely, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say 
This is comparable to Tin Fitty Imperial Stout. Not quite as good, but it's very close. And it's also very comparable to Founders Breakfast Stout. As far as the amount of black coffee goes, it's pretty close. Yeah, it's just phenomenal. Um, it's a 10 star stout. Um, there's no building up or drum roll to that. It, it's it's a 10 star stout. Um, definitely would try it again. If I see it in a store again, I'll buy it. I wish I had bought two now and put one back to age and cellaring. But um, if I see another one, I will pick up another one, date it, and put it in the cellar and see how it develops. Um, if you see this on tap or at a bar, pick it up if you're a stout fan. It's really, really good. Um, one of the better stouts that I've had in a long time now. Anyway, that has been Clown Shoes Brewery Undead Party Crasher. Hope you guys enjoyed the review as always, and stay tuned for the next one.